America Meditating Radio Show, we collect wisdom, inspire each other, and empower hearts 24-7. Hi, I'm Sister Jenna. Join me and guest on Blog Talk Radio as we amplify stories that compel us to be more for ourselves and everyone else around us. The Azar Foundation for Children of the World is an organization aimed to support women and children in need across the globe. We believe in empowering lives, strengthening minds, and providing programs that enrich health and education. The Azar Foundation was founded in 2003 and has been serving the world ever since. Visit us at our website at www.azarforchildren.org. That's www.azar, the number four, children.org to find out more information about our endeavors and join our mailing list. Remember, the smile and the cry of a child doesn't have any language. The Azar Foundation. Are you in need of a tech service company that's going to deliver the best solutions for your business? Then at Chanaka is your solutions headquarters. Here we specialize in your individual needs to make sure your business shines. For more information, please call 301 301- 417-0070 or visit us at our website at attronica.net at Tronica, where we deliver for you. Are you stressed, frustrated, or annoyed at work? You don't have to be. Soothe your mind and open your heart as Sister Jenna guides you through a peaceful, calming meditation that will prepare you to focus, be present, and most importantly, bring you back to your inner peace. The Meditation Museum in Silver Spring, Maryland offers a variety of courses and activities to make your life go a whole lot smoother. Located at 9525 Georgia Avenue, you will be able to experience the beautiful silence that's in the space. There are courses in Raj Yoga Meditation, Positive Thinking, Stress-Free Living, and Personal Development Classes. For more information, call us at 301-588-0144 or visit us online at meditationmuseum.org. Hello, this is Kristen Hoffman, and it is with great love, joy, pleasure, and spirit that I am listening to America Meditating Radio Show. Hi, I'm Angela Peabody of Global Woman Peace Foundation, and I listen to America's Meditating Radio Show. And welcome, everyone. This is America Meditating, and I'm your host, Sister Jenna, and it always gives me great pleasure to be present for you and to be in service and of service and also to be serviced by you in terms of just your care and interest and support that you've been offering us over the year. By now, if you've been following us for the last three years, we have garnered over 800,000 listeners and have had some of the most amazing people on the radio show. And I'm almost now regretting that we never had someone like Prince on. As you all know, on Thursday, Prince passed away with a flu sort of like symptom, and I think they're doing medical reports to find out what actually happened. And he was 57 in this incarnation. But what a legacy he left behind. Wow, what a performer. And I think more than anything else, I would like to dedicate today's show to him. And it's no mistake at all that today we're going to be interviewing Crystal McVeigh, who has been sharing and has a book on what dying taught me actually about living. So with that said, I'm going to play this meditation, letting go for our wonderful brother Prince as he moves on and transitions into a different role. So breathe in deeply, relax, and let's take this moment to just be in reflection, to send good wishes and vibrations as the soul flies on. Breathe in. Om Shanti. The time that we choose to be aware doesn't necessarily require me to just sit and meditate. But even while I walk and move around, I can be in a meditative awareness, which is awareness of the soul the original, 
eternal, imperishable being of light. For a little while, I'd like to invite you to be present, to be here, and to be now. Allow your mind to settle in the moment. To relax. This meditation is about awareness. It's about becoming aware of your original and eternal self. It's about connecting to your truth. Let go of your name. And observe yourself feeling nameless. Let go of your gender to discontinue thinking you're a man or a woman. Let it go and observe how you would feel walking around without a gender. Let go of the role that you play and let go of the titles that you own. Observe how you're feeling as you are gradually letting go. Let go of your religion and put it aside just for now. go of your nationality and even the language that you're accustomed to. Imagine you have no name, gender, role, title, religion. nationality or even a language. Ask yourself, how do you feel at this moment? And in this feeling, who would think of you and who would you think of? The Supreme Soul would think of you and you, the liberated soul, would think of the Supreme. In this state of absolute freedom, I am truly who I am. A free, peaceful, pure, immortal, eternal soul. Allow yourself to just be absorbed in this awareness. At this time,
Love that song, Message Home by Lucinda Drayton from her Bliss CD, and perfect for sending the soul of Prince to his next destination and journey. Today we're joined by Crystal McVeigh, the author of the New York Times bestseller, Waking Up in Heaven, and her newest book, Chasing Heaven, what Dine taught me about living, which tells her extraordinary story about her personal transformation after a near-death experience. And today, we're happy to welcome Crystal McVeigh. Hey, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Same here. You know, I'm always inspired by these conversations because it always brings us into a place where we really, really start to value life completely. Is that what happened with your near-death experience, Crystal? Oh, yes, absolutely. And, you know, I share so much in the first book just about my life before the years of childhood sexual abuse, the decision I made as a teenager to have an abortion when I just felt so alone. And and I really questioned, you know, is there a God? And if so, why didn't he save me? You know, why doesn't he love me? And I carried all of that baggage and chains with me through my 20s and through a failed marriage and two children. And, And then At the age of 33, I'm married to a wonderful man, I have four beautiful kids, and my heart stops, um, and I die in a hospital room, and my life was forever changed by just those few moments in the presence of God. Mm. What was God like? So what I remember is I remember Mm -hmm. opening my eyes, uh, waking up, I was in a beautiful tunnel of light, um, Everything happened in an instant. There was no time, no seconds, minutes, hours. And I had all knowledge downloaded to me instantly. I knew that I was still me, the very essence of me. And I was still the same crystal that had just died in that hospital room, but I was more than that. I was the most perfect version of myself, um, the me that had existed from the moment he created me. And I had two angels standing there with me. I knew that they were mine. I was excited to see them again. I was excited to be with them. I knew that they loved me, and I loved them. And we began to talk um, directly to each other with no words. It was just through thoughts and feelings and emotions. And then I became aware of God's presence in this realm, and I turned to face him. And I faced this beautiful golden light that was more than just a light. You know, I use the word light here, but it's because we don't have an earthly word to describe what his presence truly feels like. And it was as if I could I could feel 
this light. I could feel his love. I mean, tangible, feel it. And I went straight down to my face, and I just laid in front of him, and I worshipped him, and I told him how much I loved him because I wasn't meeting him. I already knew him. My spirit knew him. She recognized, I recognized my creator. And, you know, in my life, I had all these questions. What kind of God, you know, allows children to suffer? What kind of God, you know, doesn't stop these travesties that are happening on our world? You know, where are you? Where were you? And yet the only question I asked him was, why didn't I do more for you in my life? Amazing. Wow, that's beautiful. You know, it's funny, as I'm hearing you, Crystal, and I'm just reviewing my own life, I keep going back to something I shared this morning in our class, that every saint prophet has come to remind us to love, you know, ceaselessly and unconditionally. And I'm beginning, not even beginning, I'm confirming that one of the reasons why the world is in the condition that it's in is that we're so disconnected from the remembrance and the experience Mm -hmm. of that love. Yes. You know, when he did send me back, and so much transpired during our time together. I mean, he showed me my children. He showed me that the plan for their life was perfect. I mean, my babies, my little ones, they were only 10 months old, twins. And he had reminded me of a time I sat in church. And, you know, I went to church my whole life. But isn't it funny, you know, sitting in church my whole life didn't make me believe that he loved me. And And he reminded me of a time when the pastor said, you know, we're to love God uh, above all else. And and I said in my mind, I would never love you more than my kids. And he showed me my children, and he showed me that their plan for their life was perfect, just like all of ours are. We don't understand it as a human because he also showed me that that doesn't mean that we're not going to have trials and tribulations and difficulties and heartache. But he showed me that he works it all out in the end for good that every bad thing that happens he uses in some way for good. And, you know, that I was also going to see them again, that I was going to spend eternity with my children. And so I actually chose not to come back, not to be with, be their mother. I chose to go forward with him. And as we got closer to the gates, I saw this little girl playing in front of me, and I knew she belonged to me. I wanted to run and scoop her up and hold her, and I loved her so much as she played and she giggled. In fact, my spirit began to swell like a balloon with love for her. And right before I felt like I was going to explode, um, God took that from me. And when I looked back down at her, I recognized her, not as the child that I had longed for, that I had aborted as a teenager, but as me. She was me. And he said, this is what I've tried to tell you your whole life. God knew that telling me he loved me just wasn't simply enough for me, that I just couldn't believe it. And so he allowed me to see myself through his eyes. And if Every grain of sand in this world was his love. He gave me one grain, and my spirit couldn't even contain it. And he did something in that moment that years of therapy and and church had never been able to do for me before. He freed me. He freed me with the truth. And that's what it all comes down to is his love. And he sent me back with that message, a simple message to love, and that he is love. And so that's where chasing heaven you know, originated. And that's the journey is that every time we love others here, every time we show love, we give love, are we experiencing it? We are experiencing him, that he is here among us always. That's so touching. And, you know, it's, it's amazing because, I mean, I'm just thinking about my own practice of Raj Yoga, that every day you are reminded to reconnect to this loving experience so that you can be loving in adversity. And I always tell this to Antonia, our producer, you know, you don't get marks if you don't like people who act up. You know, you get marks when you can actually like them and still they can Mm -hmm. still behave however they want to. And I believe that if you can keep modeling that, there is an element of love that is flowing through you. And I think that's what we're being called to walk into, to lean into, to emerge, because this pain and hate and divisiveness in terms of the way that we speak mm-hmm. or look at each other, it's just yeah, showing that we are, right, but it is also showing that we have an absence of God's love, and that's right. becoming more and more clear as we find ourselves being challenged to love more. Well, congratulations on the release that you've now got a new book out, Chasing Heaven, What Dying Taught Me About Living. So in the first book, you really shared about everything about what actually happened to you. And I guess this book is now after, you know, years later. 
What is it that yes. you've taken from the writing of this new book? What did you learn after this book was finished? And tell us a little bit about what's in that, what's in the book. Sure. Well, I came back to the same life, but a completely different person. You know, before I was very selfish with finances and my time. And, and when I came back, all I wanted to do was love others for him. And it sounds simple, but I didn't know how to do that. And, you know, I said, God, one day I just prayed and I said, God, break my heart, you know, break it for what ever breaks yours. You have to be careful when you pray something like that because he showed me where his heart is breaking. And he led me not into grandiose churches, but he led me under bridges to sit with the homeless and to um, share meals and, and church and worship. And he sent me into the strip club for my sisters who are selling their body, you know, every night. And he sent me into a park to sit with a 19-year-old girl who had just been rescued from sex trafficking, you know. And the one question that remained was that I asked him in heaven, why didn't I do more um, for you? Why didn't I love more? And that is what Chasing Heaven is about, to be able to find beauty in the addict's eyes, you know, the prostitute's eyes, to see her the way that God sees me. And also to look in the mirror, to look in the mirror and be able to see yourself the way he sees you. I mean, it was just freeing. And so that is my journey. You know, that is my journey now, to chase him, to find him here on earth through acts of love and service. And how does God see us? You know, I explained it like with the little girl. You know, he didn't see me as this, vile, disgusting person, which is what I felt my whole life. I felt dirty. I felt that I had somehow caused this abuse to happen. And after my abortion, I felt worthless and just shattered. There was no way that I could ever believe that a God could bless me after what I had done, what had been done to me. But when he showed me how he views me, he showed me this beautiful child, this little girl who was innocent in his eyes, who was loving and whose joy came from laughter. And that's what he sees us as. He doesn't see the sin, you know, taped to me because it's already been taken care of. You know, the moment I asked to be forgiven, I was. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know what? That's where we far too long, like we hold on for far too long these experiences that we've gone through, which are, have not been pleasant. I mean, they're not pleasant. Anything that has a very violent or negative energy, it shakes up our soul system because the natural energy of the soul, I believe, is peace and purity. And when yes. that gets violated, we remember that more than we remember the peace and purity. And I believe that it's our relationship to God, a loving relationship. It doesn't have to be a religious one, but a real natural relationship with God begins to restore the memory of the peace and purity that we have now been so distracted from because of the violation, because of the violence, because of just the negative experience that we've been through. And I understand how that feels. What's the main message that you would want your readers to take away from your book and your experience? That there is an eternity, that this is not where it ends. This is where it begins. The moment that we close our eyes here on this earth is where it begins. That heaven is real and that there is a loving creator that loves us beyond anything we could ever imagine or comprehend. Um, so to get excited and to make the most of this time that we have here um, because it it matters. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Some people, I know a lot of people disbelieve in their death experience and say that, you know, new road transmitter problems are responsible or there are side effects yes. of medical drugs. And I know that there is definitely a subtle, more spiritual awareness that definitely exists in all of us. Crystal, I want to thank you so much for joining us today on the radio and for sharing well, your you for life story. Me. You're welcome. I know how impactful it is to go through what you've been and how revealing, but I can only imagine how many lives it has changed. Before I let you go, could you share what your favorite life quote is that you're living by and where perhaps our listeners can find more information about your book and maybe an event that's coming up for you? Sure. So my website is Crystal McVeigh. It's C-R-Y-S-T-A-L-M-C-V-E-A dot com. And, you know, my life quote is simple, go and love. <laughs> love it. That's beautiful. Crystal, thank you so very much, and we're wishing you continued love 
and happiness. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We can go through so much, folks, so much, and it can take a second for us to change our interpretation and perception of what we're going through. It can be something positive, and it could be something different. So listen to Crystal McVeigh's story and really see that there is something more to our existence, and it's love. To what extent can we amplify love in our awareness? that it really erases all those negative things that we ourselves have created and have been through. Food for thought. Thank you so much for joining us on the air today. And again, we send lots of good wishes and pure vibrations to the soul of Prince. Yes, very special soul that came here to play a very special part. And now he's going to come and play another special part. So with all of our good wishes and pure feelings, my dear brother, We wish you well. Take care.